Welcome back to Sunday Live. Now, this week, the name Monica Juma has been trending on Twitter. I'll wager that it's featuring on Net Search as well this week. As president and opposition alike spoke out on what they saw was a wrong move by Parliament in rejecting her nomination as secretary to the cabinet. But who is Dr. Monica Juma. Let's take a look at her profile. In brief, she was sworn in as Principal Secretary in the Ministry of Interior, actually, to be specific. That was on 27th of June, 2013. And before that, she served as Kenya's Ambassador Extraordinary to the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia and the Republic of Djibouti as well. She has also served as permanent representative to the African Union and to EGAD, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, and also to the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, that is UNECA. Ambassador Dr. Monica Juma has a lot more to her profile as well. She served as uh, executive director at the Africa Institute of South Africa and at the Africa Policy Institute. She is also an author and has served on a number of panels, including the UN High Level Panel on Resourcing the African Union uh, UN Mandated Peacekeeping Missions. As I mentioned there, she's an author of books as well as research papers and opinions on peacekeeping and security matters as well. And uh, she's a, a wife and a mother as well, I, I should say. So um, let's welcome Ambassador Dr. Monica Juma, knowing you better now, to Sunday Live. It's a pleasure to have you here, albeit a difficult week for you. Let's get straight into the interviews. There has been a letter mentioned several times, and we will read the letter to you in just a short while. But first, let's put the claims by members of parliament to you. They say you're rude, you're aggressive, difficult to work with, and you do not give them access to your office. Julie, um, thank you for this opportunity to to put in my word in uh, what has become a public debate for mm -hmm. the last one week. And before I answer your specific question, may I begin by paying my respects to the uh, families of the two heroes that we lost today in Bore, uh, indicating the kind of uh, threats that this country is facing, and to also uh, to remember what uh, we saw last year in Peketoni and to extend my very best wishes to the families in Peketoni so that they might find some grace to heal mm -hmm. from what was a terrible, um, a tragic occurrence in, in Peketoni. Um, uh, specifically, yeah, specifically, Julie, you have um, indicated uh, some of, uh, of the concerns that were raised by the members of parliament, which actually came to me at somewhat a surprise, you know. You didn't uh, expect I, I, di I did not expect um, accusations about uh, arrogance, you know. It is uh, uh, it's a difficult uh, thing to, to define particularly in a work environment. Um, I have behind me more than 30 years experience of work. It is not something I have come to be associated or accused of. Um, and on the question of accessibility, uh, Julie, um, I want to tell you that uh, in the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government, we interact with the public, including the members of parliament, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And in fact, as uh, was indicated by Minister Ngaiseri, we, uh, in March, during a retreat with the members of our committee agreed on a framework of engagement that was structured and which allowed the MPs to approach the, the ministry th at the highest level, at the ministerial level, every Wednesday to raise any concerns. But even in addition to that Wednesday uh, interaction of the members of parliament, you will probably know that this is the, the committee that uh, receives most summons from the legislative uh, mm -hmm. arm of the government. We are literally answering to queries on a, day, on a weekly basis, and we are in either the Senate or the National Assembly, literally on a monthly or sometimes twice or thrice. In fact, we were in Senate a week and a half ago. So 
I think the accusation of uh, inaccessibility came to me as a surprise. Um, and I think what we have tried to do since I came to the Ministry of Interior, and it's not just me from a management perspective, was to create a structured framework of engagement, mm -hmm. which we thought would be more useful, more consistent, and easier to respond to the concerns of the MPs and other Kenyans. As well. and other Kenyans Let as me well. read um, the letter now that was um, referred to as rude. Um, and you can make your decision. We'll ask you to respond also on the specifics of the letter. And so it uh, refers to the management of officers in the State Department of Interior. The Honorable Members of Parliament and Senators have time and again been visiting my office and making requests to have officers serving in this ministry, namely field administrative officers, as well as uniformed officers, appointed transferred or retained in specific stations across the country. I wish to indicate that honoring such requests poses a huge challenge, in uns is unsustainable and would in some cases constitute a breach of the Civil Service Code of Regulations. Um, I'm going to move on now. In light of this, I address this letter to you to request that you kindly inform the Honorable MPs and Senators about this challenge and reassure them the management of the Ministry of Interior and Coordination of National Government is committed to observe the procedures and fair administrative action as it relates to all staff within the confines of the law and laid down criteria. We believe that this will contribute greatly to efficient service provision to the public across the nation. In this regard, we urge the understanding and full support of our legislators on this matter. I thank you for your continued support. I thank you for your continued, it says, and convey compliments of my highest regard. Um, that is the letter. Explain to us what was happening and why you felt it necessary to send this. Well, this is not, um, as was explained yesterday by my cabinet secretary in his, uh, in his statement, uh, this was an, not an individual letter, and of course I have also had concerns that um, it had been addressed to the clerk of the assembly. Actually, in terms of protocol, that is the case. Principal secretaries will address our communication, as indeed we receive communication from parliament, from the office of the clerk. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason for this, uh, uh, it, it was a result of consultation within the ministry on modalities, as you've heard, to try and create a degree of efficiency in the manner in which we manage the human resource function of the ministry. And so because, of course, uh, the members of parliament are key stakeholders in the in, in the in in, in 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 management of services in the security of the country uh, we felt in the ministry that it was important to convey this information mm -hmm. and to do so gently and kindly and that is why we requested that this information on the Mondas operandi as it relates to the human resource function namely in the transfer in the in the movement of officers uh, be done within the confines of the laid down procedures right. now you will know uh, julie our constitution the current constitution does require even handedness um but number two in the ministry of interior particularly as it relates to security the movement of officers is also something you want to peg on the scope and job descriptions of those commanding these officers at the lower level. And so um, it is not possible, I don't think, that at the headquarter level you could receive um, a request and without uh, determining the character of that request, you just proceed and, and but, move But officers. let me stop you there and, and ask a very frank question. You're almost explaining, um, you know, the procedural reason why this shouldn't happen, but in a country where we're trying to uphold value systems, it simply should not be right that because you're a member of parliament, you can access an office of a principal secretary and influence the appointment the transfer, and this is what is, is really of, of great concern, is the disconnect between the reality of our security situation, for instance, on the ground, and yet the attempted interference in areas that involve staffing, for instance. Julie. Are we being, and, and let me be frank, are we being too kind in saying that 
you can't come in and ask for your relatives and friends to be appointed and moved around? Are we being apologists to members of parliament? The, the, current, the current structure of management of human resources is quite complex, mm -hmm. actually. Um, right now, we have uh, a framework where you have to seek concurrence, even from the Public Service Commission, in the case of the civilian officers, but also from the National Police Service Commission in the case of uniformed officers. And so there, there are modalities that have been put in place within our frameworks that we must follow in order to ensure natural justice is applied to every officer. So it is not possible for the PS, in fact even for the CS, to just say move this person there and there because there are administrative procedures that are required to be done. Now, for purposes of security, for right. example, which we have been grappling with, we are also saying that the full command of these officers must be domiciled within their commanders that are working with them. And this is important because, like we saw in Bore today, uh, if you had moved an officer yesterday, a couple of officers mm -hmm. for, from, or, from our, our, our headquarters, it might also create a difficulty in terms of the operations. So uh, I think what was misunderstood, in my view, and I might be wrong, was the assumption that this letter was uh, uh, thought through and driven by myself, that it wasn't uh, a, a matter that had been thought through within the ministry as a way of helping us to manage the human resource function in a consistent and administratively fair manner. And, and that is what we were seeking to do, to reassure the members of parliament that we'll do it. Now, this does not mean that you cannot receive a complaint, for example. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean so. So your office, but it you're means saying, is open and has to be open, but it's The office is open, of I, and I have dealt with quite a number of complaints. Mm -hmm. This letter was written eight months ago. So it, it doesn't mean that uh, I have not had any member of parliament since October of last year, far from it. And so what we were trying to do was really to reassure the legislators that we would do this in a manner that is consistent. And if you went back to all the HR fun, uh, uh, activities that we have undertaken in the ministry, there is a history and there is a file that will explain to you every step that has been taken. We've been asking viewers their take on this issue and so let's go to our poll question tonight. Uh, we've been asking your thoughts on the actions by members of parliament this week. We asked were they acting in your interest as a Kenyan, as a voter or a Kenyan citizen when they rejected Dr. Monica Juma. The results there, 23% say yes and 77% say no. The outcry has been huge and so let me ask you this um why do you think there's been so much solidarity around you and what next for dr monica juma well um a difficult question isn't it but i think we are at a point as a country where there is a great desire to deepen the democratic aspirations that we have accorded ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think um, uh, uh, this is what we see in terms of the people. Uh, people are, are, are wanting consistent and predictable systems. And I think that is uh, the surest way to ground the democracy that we aspire for. It is the, the best way to ground uh, the search for prosperity for this country so that every Kenyan knows there is a system by which they can be administered. Um, and I think that is what, what we are seeing Kenyan, Kenyans say. And, and, and I don't think that uh, it necessarily means people do not appreciate the oversight rule of the parliamentary uh, committees and the, and the parliament itself because, again, we bestowed on ourselves that functionality within our constitution mm -hmm. and so i think it is it is uh, it is a, a part of the democratic nurturing i think we are coming of age so to speak and and uh, and i think that is what you're seeing from the kenyans in fact if anything it's probably a sign that kenyans respect that oversight role that they expect more when members of parliament vote um i want to finally give you maybe a chance to send a message to the members of parliament of kenya and to the country what would you say well i'd say i was quite surprised at, at the verdict of the of the committee and um, i am sure it was processed with all due considerations 
I, I have to also say I am a bit su uh, surprised and I wish we are not here, you mm -hmm. know, as a country today. And that my hope is that uh, in the coming days we shall uh, um, find a way to, to, to cohere together as a country because the aspiration is that uh, we strengthen our democratic credentials and this is important for ourselves as a nation but for ourselves as a leader in the region and globally. Thank so you. You sound, you sound very conciliatory and looking forward. Um, this is our country, and I think we need, to, we need to do everything in a way that improves uh, the credentials of this country. And um, it is my hope that I'll be part of that process, because that's what I'd want to be. Mm, there we finish the interview with Dr. Monica Juma. Continue to share your views with us um, on this. And, and we move to NetSearch. We'll be reading more of your views out in a short while. Thank you so much for joining us Thank on you, Sunday Jenny. Live. Thank you very much. Now, on NetSearch, we're